Who is that? Peeking out from behind the veil, winking in the darkness with the eyes you only sometimes use. She wants to know, do you dare encounter the muse? A word of warning, don't look at her with a direct gaze. She may flee from you into her own place, leaving trails of feathers, the scent of truffles or a storm, and always the air of lady mystery. She uses your secret names to call you. She uses your secret names to call you. As she rises to the surface of form, form. But where is she calling you to? Where does she want you to go? What journey is she inviting you on? She wants to take you to the place where she dwells. You ask the address. She refuses. <sighs> Sighs. Another time, perhaps. Well, we do have work to do. Many years could go by before that winking blinks again. When you see her blinking into the space between spaces, blink, blink. Blink, wink, wink, wink. Pay attention, as the time of arrival is near to this place. Will you come this time and mystery dive? Should you be worried, you wonder? Well, yes, she quips. You could even be scared to life. Having Mew's eyes creates different lives. Don't ask what will happen, or how long it will take, or if you will survive this near miss. Instead, risk everything for this, a soul is enlightened by the muse's kiss. If you lose her trail again, there are things you can do to woo her, but don't tell her I told you this. Ask her what she likes, what she really, really, really likes. My muse likes to consume my fear with a chunky peanut butter ball and a bit of dark chocolate. I leave it for her here, on the drawing board, next to a stack of paper. Then I listen. Then I listen. I listen with the other ears. And then I pick up the pen and I begin. As I hear her cry out to the starry sky, where, oh where, shall I take her? Well, here's what happened after my muse heard the poem. She told me while appreciating my offering of poetry, peanut butter, and chocolate, I hadn't gotten it right at all. Although I have heard her say there's nothing about this that's about getting it right. She said I may have led people astray even further than they already were. But since at times she is a trickster, I decided to ask her a few questions. I started with, well, where do you live? This is the answer I got. I will tell you where I work, but not where I live. That's personal. I work. I work from a chair, lacquer red, that is situated at the back of your heart, on a gimbal, no less. My lover, who is listening in, said, ah, so your muse is dimensionally agnostic? Yes, she said. Finally, you've said something relevant. You want more from me? Get to the canvas, get to the paper, and I will show you what's next. She can be that way, my muse. She likes to catch me off guard, and if I don't take it too personally, we can even laugh about it. At other times, she is as gentle as a snowy owl, wrapping me in her feathered cape in total darkness. At other times, she is as gentle as a snowy owl, wrapping me in her feathered cape in total darkness. This is all so that I can see better. A message from my muse. And today we are gathered into this space of inquiry and imagination 
because we are summoning your muse. My muse has called your muse forward. This morning in Cafe with my beloved, we talked about these concepts of the muse, about the philosophy, about who she is and how she acts and what it's all about and where she lives. For me, she lives in the Red Thread Cafe. And it was the moment when I realized just this morning that I have invited all your muses to my own Red Thread Cafe, the place where my muse dwells and invites. And in fact, we're here at our home, Chateau Sophia, live streaming to you, right in the center. And when I told Jenna, one of the directors of Cosmic Cowgirls, that we were filming at home, suddenly she said, well, that's because the muse is so personal. The muse is so personal. She's personal to you, to your likes, what you really like, what you really love, what pleasure you're seeking, where bliss may be missing in your life. She's about your secret innermost being and knowing. And you, you are responsible for getting to know her. There's so much work that can be done through this inquiry of getting to know her. It is a journey. And we follow the red thread from our medicine basket right where it leads, through her terrain, through the place where she has her being. We're going to go on a journey today, and my muse is helping me with this. But keep in mind that we don't know what's going to happen, and we always say at Cosmic Cowgirls that our courses should have a warning label, because your life really can be changed just through an afternoon like this, because you'll begin to think about yourself differently. you begin to operate in your life in a different way. Why is this so important? Why would I spend my time doing this? Why would I get teary over this? Why would I let my muse get me dressed today over all of this? It's the most powerful, sacred information that I have ever come across and taught. That is that you have access to your own information. And in all of my work with Red Madonna, Cosmic Cowgirls, and Color of Woman, that access is essential to our development as conscious, loving, caring beings in the world. But for so many of us, consciousness is connected sometimes with a sense of over-responsibility, over-being goodness, and we miss the wild thread that moves through. We deny ourselves the sacred sweetness that's hidden within, that the muse has been protecting all our lives things we loved as children, all of our senses, our sensuality, the innermost places of your being. The muse knows about these places, and often in our lives, with the pace of our lives and family and work and everything that we do, we can go years, years can go by without nurturing that truly sensual, creative spark that lives inside of our very beingness. Years can go by of neglect. And when I think about what chocolate for the muse is really about for me it's it's about stopping neglecting your innermost sacred creative fire it's about lighting your muse fuse so that you can live in an embodied way in an integrated way with the secret wildness that lives within you that wildness is connected to a reverence at times but it's also connected with holiness. It's also connected with purity. It's also connected with the alchemical fire because it's about your own creative beingness. It's about your own voice, letting it be heard and not allowing yourself to be silenced to yourself. Speaking to others and having your voice be heard by others is a whole other conversation. But this is the conversation you are having with yourself. And the journey that we're going on is truly to honor, nurture, and deepen that conversation. Are you ready for that? Do you want to come along with me? Because I am super delighted, excited, and honored for you to spend this time and this journey with me. It's, it is such a privilege to bring my muse to the table and invite yours to join us for this wild feast want to offer a red thread to you 
in our community, the way of the red thread is a whole way of being and thinking about ourselves and our life, lives, which says that we're supposed to be here just because you're here and you're listening in this moment. You're supposed to be here. There was a line of destiny somehow that was connecting me to you and all of you to each other and to this experience in the Red Thread Cafe community. That you arrived at the right place at the right time for just what you needed and that your muse is excited to have you here. The Red Thread is the sign of connection amongst us. We are weaving a culture of connection across our communities. The Red Thread is the heart, the blood, the ancestry the hem of the garment of the great dancing lady, the color my muse chose to wear today, the color of lipstick and toenail polish, the color of strawberries, the color of the red tent where women would go to be together during their moon time, the color of red, ancient, ancient red, red being the color that women imprinted on their hands on the cave walls documented around the world from over 30,000 years, a connection back to the ancestors who chose red, the good red road of the Native American tradition. The red threads weave through so many traditions. In my church, the Madonna, the Theotokos is there, and she has a spindle of red thread, and it's during the Annunciation, so it suggests this time of in-between worlds when the angel is appearing to her and she's weaving the veil of the temple, the red curtain of the red temple that the Holy of Holies is behind. All of this woven together creates a circle of red thread. We have women from over four continents gathered with us across the world right now. And you get to be a part of feeling into that energy. You get to be a part of practicing what it feels, feels like to be connected in virtual ritual that's actually as real as your own body is to you in this moment. It's that real. And you bring your imagination and you bring your presence. And so just imagine that this red thread is being passed from hand to hand to hand right now. It's moving. It's moving all the way through the universe making its way to you. And when the red thread is in your hands, I just want you to pause for a moment and to just hold that ball. This red thread is stretchy today and it has gold sparkles on it. Just hold this ball of red thread when it gets to you. Notice that there are women to either side of you who are also connected. Notice that we are each holding our piece of the red thread. Each of us. Connected. That you have a part of this. That you are integrated. That you are wanted. That you are needed. Just hold it. Sit with yourself and ask, what is it that called you here today? What called you? What made you say yes to coming for something as ridiculous and playful as peanut butter and chocolate and red rose petals? What made you say yes? Was there a part of you that was stirring within, that was asking you to come? Is there a part of you that you're nurturing today that you know that you've been neglecting, that you want to start really cultivating? Was there a voice inside of you that you didn't recognize that called out, I have to do this and I don't even know why? Why did you come? And just in this moment, just share why you were called here. Why you were called to this red thread circle called chocolate for the muse. And why I'm here is because of over 20 years of working with women in intentional creativity. I saw common patterns of suffering that were caused by our own hand. Of course, they were influenced by media and family and negativity in the world, backing up all the BS that we tell ourselves, how hard we are on ourselves. And I was committed from an early age 
to help transform the way that we related to ourselves. To change how we are speaking to ourselves and the suffering that was self-induced combined with the neglect, the despair, the lack of soul nourishing, the lack of relationships that honor who you truly are. All of that informed me as a young woman artist and I began to chart a path with the help of the Blessed Mother and beautiful community of Cosmic Cowgirls and my own mom, Karen McLeod, and our lineage teacher, art major, Suhoi Sellers, I began to chart a path that would document how we could transform our treatment of ourselves. And I call this transformation the muse, an archetype heavy duty enough to handle the way that we actually relate to ourselves and our identity how the world occurs for us to change it to an orientation in which you feel supported, in which you feel loved and wanted, in which you don't need to seek external approval, but you begin to move in to your very beingness, to move in and inhabit your own identity. And the muse is the one who's going to show you around. But beware. She brings the searchlight to look around. She brings a pickaxe for excavation. She brings giant paintbrushes for painting over and beginning again. She has a basket full of Sharpies. She's rather dangerous. And your job today is to discover exactly what it is she wants to carry out with her today in her medicine basket. Do I think in this time that you can actually make a real and lasting shift in your life regarding your orientation to yourself in the universe? You bet I do. I believe that with my whole being, and I hope that you are brave enough to accept the dare of showing up. My muse wanted us to do a truth or dare. And so before we go into that further on in the day, choose, are you going to pick a truth to tell yourself about today, or are you going to pick a dare? Pick one, you can't have both. One, a truth or a dare. And from that framework, look for that. Look for the dare that she's gonna cause you to create in your life, something radical you're gonna shift or make a move on, or a truth you're finally willing to tell yourself. The energy of them is different, and so the framework is different if you're approaching through, to, through truth or dare, although they could lead into each other. So choose one, a framework of truth, or dare that you will reveal to yourself and of course to state what called you here and to share with us. Write it down, post it, share it, chat about it, let us know what brought you, what brought you to this space and place. <laughs>